Hi and welcome to Real Magic Review. My name is Steve Faulkner and today I will be reviewing Bend It Like Geller by Ben Harris. Before we do this, can you please like and subscribe, of course, hit the little bell icon next to the subscribe button when you subscribe. If you've already subscribed, hit the bell icon anyway if you haven't already, because then you'll know when I go live, which can be pretty random, uh, but it's usually five o'clock in the evenings, UK time on Thursday, where I'll answer your questions and comments. So comment under this and I'll, uh, I'll get to most of them. And go and check out onlinemagic.co, 800 plus videos, live sessions every week, special guests all uploaded. You get hours of content every month. Um, and it's just a lovely, lovely community. So have a look at that. And I do have free courses below here. It's not like you're gonna sign up and I'm gonna spam you every day. I don't do that. I'll send you the odd email saying, oi, do you wanna look at this? Or I've posted a video. So uh, have a look below. The link's introduction to Card Magic. I think there's three or four, maybe even five, for really, really strong uh, beginner's tricks or self-working tricks-ish. Um, not necessarily for beginners, and some theory there, so do check them out and feel free to send that to anyone you like, and the spread cold course, which is a bit more advanced, but something I'm very, very proud of. Best move in the world with cards, in my opinion. Okay, so this is, of course, a book review, but it's, I'm gonna, as I always do, I'm going to try and make it a little bit more and share my learnings and what the experience of reading this and what's happened afterwards. This has had uh, an effect on me which I want to talk about, which kind of is what the book's about, which is lovely. And this is what a book should do. And this is what DVDs, well, they do sometimes, but they rarely do. So what this is, is a celebration of 50 years of metal bending. Importantly, 50 years ago, Uri Geller went on the Dimbleby show and bent some metal and stopped some watches. But he didn't do that, of course. He did way more than that. But that's what we remember or think we remember. And I'll talk about that in a minute. And that changed everything for a lot of people, including the, I was going to say the British public, but the public all over the world. And I've watched that recently, and I thought I'd seen it. It was a false memory. I hadn't. It, it was the year I was born, so I didn't sit and watch it live. That would have been impressive. Um, I would have probably found it a little bit dull, to be honest. But I did watch it recently, and because it was so prevalent in culture, and of course not, not just being a magician, but as I was growing up, it was on the front of magazines. I remember getting this magazine called The Unexplained. I was obsessed with it. Or, or there was books on it or something. I'm not sure whether I got them in real time or whether they were old, but they, I remember there was a picture of Uri Geller on one of them or in there. Just fascinating stuff. Knew nothing about magic. Didn't think it was a magic trick, of course. And, you know, I've talked about it with people since I was a kid. It's just a big, big, big thing and infected a lot of people. Uh, infected, Freud, affected. <laughs> affected uh, a lot of people and people still talk to me about it now as a magician they go what do you think you're gonna you know when i do metal bending which i do they'll go oh you know it's, it's amazing he did that is that a magic trick and of course i don't tell them but people are still aren't asking that question so it is a celebration it's a celebration of metal bending but also of uri geller but the important thing it's why why is it so prevalent why is it in our culture? Why is it in, as, as a global culture, why does nearly everybody in the Western world especially know who Uri Geller is and, and know the history of it and have maybe seen or heard about the original phenomenon? And in the book, he, he does talk about people like Peter Turner and me that weren't there when it happened, but are looking at it kind of afterwards and how that affected us too. So the first chapter, Obviously, it introduces it. The first chapter, Enter Starman, talks about that Dimbleby um, event, which it really was. And when you watch it, and again, some of you are going to go, oh, get on with the review. I don't want to. This is, this is what the book has done, but also what the whole thing is. Now, like I said, what it, why it's important, I think, to, to read it if you're interested in this and not just always default to the DVDs and the techniques. So I watched Uri's performance, and it is absolutely phenomenal it's there is so much to it and it's not just that he's doing a drawing duplication this is what he does he does drawing duplication he does a watch uh, starts and stops watches bends <laughs> bends the hand of a watch which is just such a lovely moment and bends a couple of forks right or bends a fork or two that's it in in like 20 minutes the drawing duplication is nearly five minutes and he doesn't do any kind of 
gags, of course he does, it's not that sort of thing, but there's no really clever patter or no obviously clever patter. It's not a performance and there is so much silence. And I think when I looked at this, I thought, of course, this is what pure mentalism should be. It's not saying you can't do the other stuff, like, but if you really want it to be a, a deeper, meaningful experience for someone, use silence. Don't feel like you've got to fill everything with words. And I did a, I do a couple of mentalism routines. There's a couple of times I've got a bit stuck and I've gone, I'm not going to be seeing what I'm seeing here and I'm struggling. And I've, I've played that thing of kind of just pretending it isn't quite coming to me and not filling it with noise. But I've been really self-conscious going, this is dead time, but I can't. Ah, oh, there it is. And then going into it. And people come up to me saying, that was so tense. And you go, oh, oh, right, for me it was awkward, but for them it was a different thing. And I think watching that, it was like, less is more. You don't have to fill everything. It, you can take your time. Confident, be confident about what you're... Well, you, you look at the confidence in what you're doing. Imagine how terrifying that would have been when you're on live TV and you're trying to convince an audience and arguably the world, but the country, that this is serious. And his... The way he came across, and again, this is why we can learn so much, was considerate. He wasn't like being cocky, he was like, he was, he was humble. And when we think of Uri Geller, we don't think of that. Now I think he, he is, but we, because he's so successful, it's easy to think that he's arrogant. But it's very humble, he's very empathic. He's saying, I'm sorry if this takes too long. Um, is that okay, have we got time? Do you want me to stop? And all this stuff, and it was, it, you feel like you're on his side straight away. He's not running in there and kind of go, hey, I'm gonna, you know, all this sort of stuff. Yes, I'm going to give it a go. And the, like I said, there's no real patter or scripting, even though he says so many things that are clever and talks about it doesn't always work. And, and somebody says, can you bend this? Because I don't think I can. And not once do you feel, oh, you're just trying to get away with it. You're kind of, you're taken along by him. And later on, after watching that, all the other stuff makes sense. So Richard Bush talking about the well, pace and lead, what I know from the kind of personal development world, but what he talks about from Ericksonian therapy, but also that thing of how do you get people to believe, how do you get them to get to that point without just sort of showing them something really unbelievable? Well, you, get them something, you show them something really believable and then they're bound to come on with you. And that's not giving the game away, by the way. Richard Bush's essay goes into a lot more detail and he talks about the Bush effect. And if you don't know who Richard Bush is, he peak performances, peak encores, very, very important in the mentalism world, but also a therapist. And he comes up actually in Peter Turner's essay as well. But all of that stuff will make sense if you watch that footage. And how does he get everybody to that point? And it's fascinating. And it reminds me also of Darren Brown when I first saw Darren Brown do the, the um, Russian roulette. How did we go from not thinking it was just a stunt to something else and maybe not being able to explain what that other thing was? So that's a long rambly thing, but I think it's important to put all that in, into context. So then we have look and learn. Now the look and learn section are the moves really, the original moves that people when they saw Uri, magicians took and kind of went, well, I think he's doing that. And when it started seeping its way into different performers and lots of people who were there, people like Banachek that saw it, that changed everything, Richard Osterlind, and obviously Ben Harris, and people later on like Peter Turner and and Alan New and Guy Bavley all took it and started performing it. But what were they performing? And this shows you the moves, really. And it's when you read it, you'll go, you know, where are the rest of the moves? And you realise there aren't any because the whole thing is about the performance. But there, these moves are important and they are important that you learn them properly. When I say there aren't any, there's not, you know, it's not like a card book where you might have, oh, it's got 800 moves in it. No, this is if you know this stuff, you'll be able to do it technically. But it's really nice to see it written. It's really nice to see it um, illustrated by Eva Elizaldi, who's worked with with Ben for a long time. And incidentally, um, Steve Shufton edited that, who, this, who's also worked with Ben for a long time. But even though I've done metal bending for a while and I knew these moves, I did learn something from, oh yeah, oh yeah, if I do that, that that's a little bit better. So it takes you through the moves, takes you through the original stuff that he did with keys, uh, and then spoons, and then using a control spoon, a different spoon, and talks about the, the misdirection, which is so important. That is all this routine is based on. It's based on the misdirection, and it's based on boldness and confidence, again, which we can look back and, at Uri and be inspired by. And I'm looking at notes here because I don't want to miss anything out. Uh, deep thoughts, almost like I just said in not a very deep way, talks about the phenomenon of when mentalism took it, but also the importance of 
why is it okay that you fail sometimes? And parts of Uri's performances and a very famous one, which to most people you would think would be a career buster. Like you do that and it's gonna just, and again, you can watch this online. I think it was the Tonight Show. You watch that and you go, what? Game over, right? Spoiler alert, you know, did, did that TV appearance do what most people thought it wouldn't kill his career? Not a bit, didn't affect it a bit and maybe even improved it. Next uh, is evolution. So this is where we, we've got the moves, which I still think is the backbone of everything really. But there are gimmicks that have been made and this is where magicians started taking it and mentalists as well, but magicians started taking it and sort of, you know, with their knowledge of gimmicks and started changing it. Then reflections, this was, this is where we start the essays. Now I'm gonna look at my notes here because there's loads of them. Pablo Amara, this is again talking about how we can take this from being, I'm gonna bend a spoon to having more meaning, using metaphor and inspiring action and maybe changes in someone's life. David Berglas, and this is about the David Berglas and Uri Geller uh, rivalry, but then what it became. And I think it's just a lovely story and really important. And it's something that people have talked a lot about, but without the facts. 